to be here this morning. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Beautiful, beautiful day the Lord has given us. We appreciate that. Uh, we will look to the Lord in prayer and then we'll be dismissed to our Sunday school class. All right. All right, Brother David Payne, would you pray for us? Lord, thank you for the good week you've given us this past week, Lord, and bless the services today, Lord, and the week to come, Lord. And we bless the Sunday school service, Lord. If anybody's here, it's not say, Lord, please say in your name. Amen. All right, you be this way. I ain't going in, boy. Well, it's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. 
better than being anywhere else. Amen. If you will, turn your Bibles to John chapter 18. When my dad asked me to teach this morning, I was very nervous because I still get nervous when I preach, but hope has helped. I was going to be teaching on one thing, but on the way here, the Lord said, you're going to teach on something else this morning, so hopefully it will still be a blessing. <clears throat> Starting in verse 37, Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king, to this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Every one that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. Truth is something that we often ignore, something that most people don't even want to admit. Truth is the quality or state of being true. And a lot of times we'll say something, we know it's true, or someone says it to us, but we want to ignore it because we don't want to be wrong. And we're known for doing that. There's only, the truth is the Bible. The Bible is true. There's no matter what, there's nothing you can do to change that. It is true. There's people out there, evolutionists, atheists, they say the Bible isn't true. That God isn't true. Just because they can't see it, they don't think it's true. But if it's not, just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not, doesn't mean it's not true. God, God is there, even though you can't see him. He is true. He is real. And that's something we need to acknowledge. It's something we need to share. Whatever it takes, we need to share the truth with the people. John chapter 8, verse 31. <clears throat> then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed? And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If we will acknowledge the truth, we can be free. We won't have to worry about anything, but we have to acknowledge the truth. A lot of times, we'll tell the truth. A lot of times, we think we're always right and never wrong. So we wind up ignoring the truth and making the person that's saying it sound like he's a liar. We often do it. I'll do it. Just because I don't want to be wrong, I'll, I'll ignore the truth just so I can be right. But even if you know the truth, you're still wrong. We'll change the way people say things so it does, so it isn't true, so we can be right. The Lord is true. No matter what you do, you can change the way the Bible says it, but the way God put it is still true, no matter what. We'll, we'll wind up in arguments saying that maybe this word, this word isn't really a word. And we'll go to people saying, is this word is a word? And they'll, maybe, they'll say yes, but we'll turn on that I told you it was a word, just so you can be right. We'll change what we said just so we can be right, so we can say we, were, we said the truth and you were the liar. The devil is the father of lies. Yeah. He, will, he will try to get us to lie to people to make, just so he can be true, because he thinks he's the best. But the truth is, we are wrong. God is always right, no matter what we say. God will always be right. If you don't want to go somewhere God says to you, He's right. You, you'll probably wind up going one way or the other. Also, there's times that we will talk. I've been in arguments where people are talking about the Bible. Not sure exactly which Bible they're using, but we'll get an argument of saying what the Bible says. And most of the time, I bring out I'll have to get out my phone and I have my Bible app on it and I'll show them. And then they'll get out their phones and see, this is what it says. And most of the time, their Bible is going to be a different kind of Bible than NIV, the New King James, whatever it is. The Bible is always true. What we believe 
If we believe in the right things, it's true. If you believe in God, it's true. God sent His Son to die on the world, to die for our sins. That's it. That's a truth you can't ignore. People will ignore that truth because they don't want to believe. Because they don't think they can be wrong. There's different stories in the Bible that talk about truth where people thought they were better than others. They went to Jesus and Jesus spoke the truth and they turned around and left. Like the lady who had sinned, they were trying to get Jesus to condemn her. Jesus just stooped down and rolled in the dirt. They came again and then... I can't remember exactly what Jesus said, but when he said it, the people just walked off. And then Jesus stood up and told the lady that basically said that her sins were forgiven and to sin no more. Jesus cannot lie. God cannot lie. We can lie. We're, we're born lying. we born, we lie. When we're a baby, we'll lie. But we have. But when, we, when we're caught in our lies, it's bad. Now, we may not be caught in that lie today, but we will, that, we will be found in that lie later on, and we will have to pay for that. This, some lies, you don't want to pay for that lie. Because some of them can be really bad. Your parent, parents, they'll tell you the truth, but we don't want to acknowledge that truth. Because most time kids think they know better than parents. We don't. We can, I can tell you stories. My mom can tell you stories. We don't know better than she does all the time. Or most of the time, actually. She does, she does know what she's talking about. I may not like it, but it's true. And I have to acknowledge it. And most of the time, I have to wind up going back because, and ask her to forgive me because I got mad at what she said. And that's not easy to do sometimes. When you're on a job, if you're doing something wrong and your boss knows it, he tells you you got to do it this way, we'll get, we'll get mad at them and say, no, this is how we do it because we think we know what we're doing. I've done that on the chicken farm. I was, thought I knew what I was doing, but I didn't. I told my dad, I said, I know what I'm doing. It just made things worse. And I go back to him and said, I'm sorry, how do I do it? That was probably the longest day on work that time. But there are things that we do not know that other people do know. And if you will let them help you, it is easier to acknowledge the truth. There, there are people in the world, two different kinds of people, those who acknowledge the truth and those who ignore the truth. Those who ignore the truth, it's like you have a choice of friends. You know this person, he, he goes to church, he's a good godly person, he's been raised in church all his life, then you have this other person Who's, he looks cool and all that, he's, but he does all these different kind of things that are wrong. And you have to make a tr the choice. Do I ignore the truth and go with this cool guy, or do I, go, do I acknowledge the truth and go to the person that is godly, the one that can help me? No one can make that choice for you. You have to make that choice. Will you acknowledge the truth or will you ignore the truth? The Bible is true. That is our truth. And we need to share that truth with whoever we cross. That is our responsibility, is to share the truth of the gospel. Wherever, wherever you are, if you're at work, if you're, at, if you're in the store, wherever you are, you need to share the truth. Share the truth that God gave us. That is our, our truth, is where when we got saved. When we acknowledge the truth, the Lord accepted us into His family. And that's something we need to practice is telling the truth. We need to acknowledge the truth. If we acknowledge the truth, we make things so much easier on ourselves and the people we're around. If we'll just acknowledge the truth and try to make things better. If you know something's wrong, if you know somebody's doing wrong, but you don't care, you're ignoring the truth, and you might wind up, do, wind up in that crowd and getting away from God. Instead of ignoring the truth, take the chance to acknowledge the truth and tell them that they tell them what they're doing wrong and that they need to correct it or try to help them correct it. And that's also a good opportunity to tell them about the gospel. This will always be true. 
no matter how far down the road, no matter if it's a thousand years from now, God's word will always be true. As the Bible says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The life. It will always be true, no matter if it's a thousand years, no matter if it's ten thousand years, it will always be true. People believe that the world's billions of years old. But if you read the Bible, it's not. It's estimated around 6,000 years old. And some people don't, we don't, sometimes we just don't want to acknowledge that because <coughs> we don't think how long the earth's been here and how everything happened. We don't think it can happen in just 6,000 6, years. We have to remember God created everything in just six days. For us, that's not possible. We cannot create something like that in just six days. And as it says, the Big Bang Theory, explosions don't create stuff. It just destroys stuff. And that's something we should remember. We need to acknowledge the truth. And if we're going to help people, we have to acknowledge the truth in order to help them. To tell people about Jesus, we have to acknowledge that Jesus is true. We have to acknowledge that we don't know as much as we think we do. We have to acknowledge that our way is not always better than we think. Our way is not always the best way. You may think what you're saying is true, but it may not be. God tells you to do one thing. God said, if you're like you're in an argument, God says, what he said is true. But because you're afraid to be wrong, you'll change your answer just to say that you're right. What you say remains the same. You can you can change your answer, but what you said from the beginning, it's still there. But we most time we hope that they'll forget what you said and what they said, just so you can be the one that said the truth. But what you said from the beginning is what you said, and you cannot change that. You were wrong, and they were right. And we have to acknowledge that we can be wrong. We make things a whole lot easier if we'll just say, I was wrong. If we'll just acknowledge the truth that we can be wrong and that the other person was right, your friendships can last longer, your family will stay together longer. The church will stay together longer if you'll just acknowledge the truth and apologize if it's necessary. If you have to apologize, apologize. But if you just say, okay, I was wrong, but if you don't apologize, that's not showing everybody that you were wrong. That's just saying, especially if you don't say it out loud. You're just saying, you're just like whisper to yourself, I'm wrong. But nobody else hears it and you don't apologize. That can still create problems. Because things will just get worse because you won't admit that they're wrong. Because later on there could be another argument and it will just the problem will just get bigger and bigger. Because you wouldn't just simply apologize and tell them that I was wrong. If you're wrong, you're wrong. Accept it. There's, you can't always be right. Nine times out of ten, you're probably wrong. I know why. Nine times out of ten, I'm wrong, and I have to acknowledge it. I have to go back and I'm wrong, you were right, you told the truth. I should have accepted it, but I didn't, because I was just full of pride. I didn't want to be wrong, because then that means they were right, and that means... The truth was, the truth hurts. It does. No matter what you do, the truth will always hurt. But if we will acknowledge the truth, you can help more people than you think you can. You can tell more people about Jesus if you'll acknowledge the truth. And that's what we need to do: is to acknowledge the truth, whatever it takes. If it takes, if you have to hurt people to acknowledge the truth, that may you may have to do that. But it's not worth always being right and ignore the truth. Because if you ignore the truth all the time, you'll wind up hurting people more than the truth will. Words hurt worse than actions do. Actions speak louder than words, but words are sharper. You can hurt more people with your words than you can with your fist. You can't. You'll say something, and you, you scar them. You scar them for life a lot of times. Just because of what you said. It's like you say, I hate you, and you act it. Even if you don't mean it, that can still hurt them. But we have to remember, the truth is God. The Bible is truth. And we need to use that 
in whatever way we can. At work, try to put the truth in there. Try to tell them about Jesus. They will die and go to hell if they're not saved. And that's a truth we most of the time ignore. With family members, with friends, we know they're lost, but we'll ignore the truth because we don't want to see them die and go to hell. But that's a truth that we're going to have to acknowledge. Whether it's when they die and go to hell, or whenever, we're eventually going to have to acknowledge that truth. But if you will talk to them, tell them about Jesus, you can save them from hell. You can keep them from going to have to go to hell. If you'll tell them about the truth, tell them about Jesus, they can go to heaven, which is a much better place to be. And that's something we need to work on, is telling the truth. Telling truth may get you in trouble, but it's better than lying and making things worse later on.
but I want to take some time and deal. It deals with uh, many different things. Uh, it deals with salvation. It deals with uh, uh, tongues. It, it deals with uh, going to law one with another. Uh, just a lot of practical things. Uh, it deals with the gospel over in chapter number 15, the resurrection, uh, many, many different things in the book of 1 Corinthians. And, and the Corinthian church was very, very immature. They were very, um, I don't know how else to say it, the childish in many ways. And, and the Lord knows we don't need to be childish in these days. We need to be mature. We need to think soberly as we were trying to preach the other night. So if you will, this week I'm going to challenge you. Read the book of 1 Corinthians through a few times and get familiar with the book. And uh, maybe the Lord, Lord willing, next Sunday we'll try to step in and try to start dealing with those things. Uh, a few other things. What time is it? 10 30. A few other things. Uh, <coughs> World Day weekend. Uh, Brother Roger Tilly will be here, Ms. Rebecca's dad, missionary to England, him and his wife, and uh, the Lord willing, he'll be preaching at least one service that day. I'm looking forward to them being here. Um, I, I was kicking around in my head today, earlier, uh, if we can, maybe that Sunday we'll do a, uh, a big meal for after service, if that's all right with uh, We'll have a meal that day. Fellowship, one that we haven't had that in a little while since Mission Conference, anyway. So, uh, we'll, Memorial Day weekend, we'll have a, a luncheon after the service that morning. And uh, we're going to celebrate Brother Roger, too, who's going back to England. <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding. But, uh, but anyway, so think about that, if you will. We'll probably do the potluck. That'd be all right if I bring a little bit of something different. Just let Miss Jack know what you're bringing. That way, we won't bring multiple of the one thing, right? Uh, that has happened in the past. And uh, so uh, if you could let Miss Jenny know what you'd like to bring. Uh, Miss Patty, are you going to be gone or are you, are, you, are you still planning or what you doing? No, that weekend I have to prep for a colonoscopy the next day, so I won't be here. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm afraid. <laughs> I'll be here that morning, but I'll, okay. after that I won't be All right. Um, I didn't know if you would be going to Florida or not. But, uh, no, probably that's probably postponed until June or so. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll try to invite somebody to come along. I think that'd be a blessing. And uh, invite them to eat. And, uh, so that's one thing we've we got out in the future. Uh, but pray for uh, wisdom on who the missionaries we need to take care of and take on for support. Uh, I don't. Uh, I haven't got a whole lot of feedback. Everybody's mentioned a little bit uh, here and there, but uh, we're going to be taking on two or three more missionaries here in this kind of this month. Mm -hmm. And uh, pray that the Lord let us have some wisdom of who we need to take on. And uh, so pray about that if you will. Uh, other than that, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. You know, anything else I need to talk about or mention? That weekend with Paul, that three weeks away to celebrate. Three weeks away. Yeah. Okay. All right. I remember that if you will. Um, seems like there's something else we can't remember right now. Anybody, anybody else? All right. We'll have a little bit longer break in between services today, so if you want fellowship, it's a good thing. Part of church is fellowship. Amen. With one another, God's people. That's a blessing to be around God's people. All right, we'll be dismissed and we'll be back at 11 o'clock. Hopefully we'll get some batteries. Um, we'll have time to get and uh, we'll go further. Amen. All right, we'll be dismissed.